Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. to make a special shout out this week is National Police Day uh, week and last week was National Nurses Week so to all the nurses and all the police out there uh, we want to recognize you for all your hard work so thank you um, with that we will move into the consent agenda consent agenda comprises of approval of minutes for March 14th 21st April 4th and April 18th approval of payroll May 1st and May 15th Approval of claims, April 20th, May 4th, and May 11th. Treasurer's report, March 31st. And weights and measures, monthly report, March 16th through April 15th. I will open that to the floor. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, now we move into Memorial Opera House, Scott McDonald. Scott is here. I'm going to have you read the names this time. Sure thing. Because we got a little... <laughs> How are you doing, Scott? I'm well, thanks. Good to see you. Good morning. Great. Thanks. Okay, we have 12 contracts here. Uh, yes. And they include our 2018 production of The Hunchback of Notre Dame, uh, South Shore Art Orchestra Artist Agreement for May 24th, South Shore Orchestra Artist Agreement for May 29th, uh, Bobby Sukhavachkov, two artistic service agreements. He makes it sound so easy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know him. <laughs> uh, Jennifer Lundin, an artistic service agreement. Trisha Sabachik, uh, Andrew Flash, Kurt Dillons. Those are all artistic service agreements in regards to Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. The Respite House Venue Rental Agreement for next year. Alexis Bratsakis and Patty Schaffner. Okay. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve uh, the, artist, the artistic service agreements and venue rental agreements for the Memorial Opera House. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank, Thank you very much. Scott. Thank and you. I wanted to mention for auditions for Joseph, they had over 80 mm -hmm. people come and audition. So yeah, we start really rehearsals. We're to some excellent talent. We're, great show. We're thrilled. We have uh, a rehearsal starting on Thursday, and there's a lot of children involved, and it's going to be a really great community experience, I think. We've so. got a good head of steam going down there. Thank you. Going. Thank you very much. Thanks, Scott. Mm -hmm. Uh, now we'll move into new business with the commissioners. Uh, we have an introduction of interns. Uh, for Highway Stormwater GIS, uh, Bob Thompson, why don't you uh, come forward and do your thing? We're excited about this, by the way. I know I am. So, <coughs> all right, we have hired six uh, civil engineering college interns to do work for us this year, plus also, um, two GIS interns. We have seven of the eight here today. Unfortunately, Grace Rowan, uh, one of our GIS interns, was not able to make it. So I'm going to introduce everybody to you. The whole idea of this is what we're going to do is going around. Um, we have two crews that are going to be working in the stormwater, and we're going to be going around the watersheds to actually inspect all of the infrastructure that we have within the watershed and gather the data for us as far as the size of the structure, uh, what stream it's on, uh, the location of it, because all of us, they're going to have pads with them in the field that is going to be doing all of this in real time. And it's going to be downloading in it, and it's going to be going into our GIS system. Uh, we're going to be able to monitor real time where they're at as far as that goes. Um, any data that they're putting into this system is going to go into GIS. The whole idea of this is to get this up on our GIS system so all of the information is just a click away. I guess to explain also, I did this a few years ago um, with when I was down with the highway engineering department. We won't say how many years ago that yeah, was. <laughs> no, it was over 20 years ago. We did the same program and I wanted to do another interesting. 
item with that too. We did locations of all of the structures. Um, why are we doing it again? Obviously to get it in the GIS on that, but also the lifespan of these structures changes and we need to figure out, you know, I, hopefully they're going to catch, you know, some bad items out there. Or hopefully they will not, but if they do, they'll report back to us. Uh, the other section is, is going to be with the transportation side, with the PASER system that we have, the management system. We're going to be actually going through and auditing what we have on that, uh, measuring the roads, also checking the drainage along the roads and giving a criteria for that. Um, and putting that also into the management system in GIS real time. We do have that on GIS now, but like I said, we're going to be auditing, and if there's any corrections that we need, it's going to be done in real time. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce all of our interns here. And make sure we give the school they're representing, too. Yes, I will. All right. We have, you guys want to just kind of walk on up here? <laughs> Me. I'm just going to go by the uh, front end. Yeah, we did get the t-shirts. We have Tanya here. Tanya is a uh, Valparaiso University uh, civil engineering major. Uh, Tanya just completed your junior year, correct? Next year? Sophomore year. Okay. Um, well, Tanya is a foreign exchange. Um, she is from China, northern provinces. Macy? Macy is a dual degree major with St. Mary's College um, and also Notre Dame University with Civil Engineering. Paul, Purdue University, um, Civil Engineering. Reed, he is Meteorology, just graduated Meteorology with VU, correct? And uh, is very interested in GIS. So Reed is going to be a, one of our GIS interns that's going to be taking all of this data. And then next we have Owen. Owen um, is going to be leaving here immediately and going to take his last final at VU. Owen is <laughs> um, a civil engineering major at VU. And we have Morgan. Morgan is also a civil engineering major at VU. And then we have Hannah at the end. Hannah is also going to be running and taking that same final. <laughs> and Hannah is a civil engineering major with uh, VU. I, one of the things I wanted to point out, which I think is very interesting out of this, we have six civil engineering majors on that and two males. Um, what I find interesting is when I did this in 95, I know a number of years back, just a few years back, okay, maybe it might have been earlier than 95, it might have been 94. Um, at that time, I did have a number of VU civil engineering students and also um, a couple of Purdue students too on that. So VU is a great um, source over there for students. At that time, out of the six, I only had one female. Um, so I had five gentlemen doing that. Now it, it's amazing how the tides have turned. And out of the six, I, we have four young ladies, civil engineering majors, and then two young gentlemen doing that. So I needed to point that out and plug that out. So. Well, I know we're very excited. Um, I know a lot of people in the county really haven't paid much attention to our movement towards a better stormwater system and structure and division that we have here in the county. Um, again, we're trying to make GIS more relevant. And uh, now that we are responsible for this entire system, uh, what, uh, what this requires is data. And that's what these folks are going to be going out and getting for us this year. So um, we're looking forward to all the information that you're going to bring to us, and it's going to make our system better. And uh, we look forward to it. It's, uh, we're excited about this. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, next on the agenda, we have a request for additional appropriations from fund 1172 sub fund number 2294 major moves in the amount of three hundred seventeen thousand hundred ninety seven dollars to account 3950 contractual services to reappropriate matching funds for an RDA airport grant originally approved in April 2016 but not extended do we have a motion so moved. second 
We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries again. Uh, number three, a request for an additional appropriation from Fund 4903, hospital proceeds in the amount of $517,000 to account 3950 contractual services to pay for ambulance services. Um, if some of you probably don't remember, but our CCD fund was cut by the state this year, so this is an additional appropriation to shore that up because of the funding that was cut by the state. Uh, I'm going to open it up to the board members. Any questions, comments? Let's do it. When you do, when we finally have a motion, a second, do a roll call vote. Oh, okay. We need unanimous. Okay. Is the council voting on this tonight? I believe so. Yeah. It's on the agenda. I'll make the motion to approve. We have a motion? Uh, second with discussion. We have a motion and a second. Is that 517,000? Is that reflective of uh, uh, as a result of these these uh, negotiations that we've had here recently? Yeah, the, the, new the 517 number gets us to the end of the year. Okay, uh, but for the negotiations, that number would have been 300 thousand dollars more yeah. to get us to the end of the year. Okay. So would we want uh, the auditor to call yeah. roll? Thank you, Madam Auditor. Okay, Commissioner Good? Yes. Commissioner Blaney? Yes. And Commissioner Biggs? Yes. Three to zero, affirmative. Motion carries. Uh, number four, DLZ, Larson Danielson payment application number eight in the amount of $58,833.54 for the new animal shelter. Stephen, how are you doing today? Good. How are you doing? Good. I'm Stephen Kromkowski with the DLZ, just uh, to present to you pay up number eight from Larson Danielson for the animal shelter in the amount of $58,833.54. So this is um, reflects about, including the retainage, about 93%. Uh, they're clearly beyond that. Um, they've just submitted pay up number nine, uh, which is in the process of your review. So. Um, but if you have any questions, I'll uh, be happy to entertain those. I was out there yesterday. Building looks great. So we're getting ready to start moving some animals here pretty soon. So I, I would offer that I know um, uh, there's a county um, in north, I'm sorry, southwest Michigan that has already visited the animal shelter because they've done good things. So the word is spreading throughout the region and, and elsewhere throughout the state um, and the adjoining states. So a couple Tell them there's a copy fee. There you go. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. Well, and also, before we move those animals, the shelter's doing a um, reduced rate for adoptions to make it easier to adopt out animals so we don't have to move as many. So anybody looking for a dog, now is a good time. Or a cat. Or a cat. <laughs> Stephen, this pretty much concludes. Uh, not that we, not that I don't want to see you again, but um. yeah, from our services, um, we did do a punch list. There's a follow-up to confirm all the punch list items are are completed, and then there's also some closeout documents, including warranties that we'll be reviewing. But in terms of our on-site, and um, we're always available um, as needed uh, when requested, but. Our services are sort of waning down now. Okay. Yep. Well, I'd like to open up to the floor for the commissioners. Any more additional comments, questions? Do we have a motion? Uh, second. We have a motion and a second to approve application number eight in the amount of $58,833.54 for the new animal shelter. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. See you along the trails. Amendment number one to plan document and summary plan description for Porter County Government, company physical through workforce health. These are uh, both these, number five and six on our agenda are both recommended by our current service provider, um, Ari Sutton. I would, I've reviewed them and I would recommend the commissioners approve them to the amendments to the plan document and summary. Can we approve both? You can. Okay. So moved. Second. Okay, so we have a motion 
and a second for amendment number one and amendment number three to plan document uh, for the summary plan for prescription government uh, for the Porter County uh, Government Health Plan, one for company physical through Workforce Health, the other for organ transplants. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Animal shelter ordinance revision. Is that Tony or is that? That's me, but I can. That's Scott. So on the animal shelter ordinance revision, basically what that amounts to is uh, through the cooperative effort of the commissioner's office and the um, sheriff's department, uh, we were moving the, uh, the oversight of the animal control officers to uh, the, animal the animal shelter director. So there's some, just some minor tweaks to our existing code to allow that to happen. Um, beyond that, the only other uh, tweaks to the code uh, or our ordinance was to um, on the process on when when we actually hold dogs and the process to get those back to the owners and who they pay but no significant changes as far as timing or money basically one is just to, to put the animal shelter director in charge of the animal control officers and the other was just to kind of clarify when and who gets paid when dogs get uh, impounded so okay any questions from the board uh, Yes, Mr. Chairman, I, I just here yesterday, I think it was yesterday, I had a long conversation with uh, with Tony in regard to a complaint that um, her department had been dealing with and it uh, somehow it ended up um, getting to me uh, and then I involving myself in it. That, uh, But through that process, what, what I've learned is, um, you know, our our animal control officers are, you know, they're occasionally citing um, uh, violators. Um, however, um, those tickets aren't being collected. Uh, there, there seems to be no enforcement mechanism um, to, uh, uh, like a better better term, uh, force uh, those who have been cited to pay their tickets. And in other words, there seems to be this a large outstanding number of citations sitting out there that that aren't being collected and um, uh, uh, there there also uh, seem appears to be an issue of of uh, uh, when when cases are brought to the prosecutor's office uh, those cases aren't being prosecuted and uh, I haven't had the opportunity to talk to uh, uh, Brian Genzel yet but uh, you know, if we have ordinances on, on the books that our people are enforcing, we're pay, paying them to enforce, but they're not, you know, they're, they're handing out citations and those citations aren't being collected. People are just ignoring them. And then, you know, nothing's done down the line by the prosecutor's office to, to enforce those, uh, those fines. Uh, we're just spinning our wills. Well, yeah, it's a, it, it's a double-edged sword because on, there's two different things that, you were talking about there. One is, if we have a dog running at large, ordinance violation ticket is something different than if the animal animal control is sending up a, a dangerous dog or a dog bite or uh, or neglect or something like that to the prosecutor's office. And it is to some extent true that if we write tickets and uh, they're getting prosecuted from the sense of uh, ran through the system, they're having hearings, they're getting defaulted, and they're getting judgment liens. Um, so if anything were to occur, they have to pay them. But uh, going what normally, if you were doing a traffic ticket, as my analogy, the, what gets people to the, you know, to the clerk's office to pay their ticket eventually is the fact that their driver's license got suspended if they didn't pay the ticket. On dogs running at large tickets, those don't do the same thing. So. Ultimately, what ends up happening is they end up with a judgment lien that's recorded at the at the at the, at the courthouse. And so, if they ever you know buy a piece of real property or something like that, or sell, you know, it gets paid that way. But there isn't enforcement beyond that. Um, the other issue has more to do with neglect and dangerous dogs when it comes to the actual prosecutor's office and their, their prosecution of those issues. Well, I guess my question is, is are, are, we, are we handing down judgment liens on those? Yes. 
on those cases where every, they just, every they one just of ignore them. them? Every one of them. And then when they do pay their fine, where does that money end up? Well, right now, if they get if they pay the fine, eventually what happens is, is the, co the courts take their court costs and fines, and the rest we have funds set up here. The rest comes here through the funds that we have set up for the animal shelter or for the animal control. It's not animal shelter; it's actual animal control. Gets so when a citation back. is written, we actually receive a portion of that fine well, that's the, been paid. The fine is ours. The court costs is the courts. Okay. But it does end up back with us, as you're saying. When they're actually paid. When they're paid, yeah. Okay. Um, other counties handle that, do you know? I mean, it's just My guess is other counties are going through the same thing. We are, because you're, you're, I mean, what do you do other than, you know, levy some kind of lien on their property? What else? You're not going to lock them up for it. No. I, I think uh, what I would suggest here is that maybe, uh, Commissioner Biggs, uh, if you could maybe pull a meeting together with uh, the animal shelter, Tony. I think it would be good to have our new uh, uh, animal control, who is now under the direction of Tony, and uh, I think what, and maybe the county prosecutor. I think it'd be a good time to maybe sit down and uh, have a meeting, and let's go rework through all these uh, um, these procedures and everything else, just so we get everybody on the same page. Um, we now have uh, you know the same guys, but they're under new direction. Um, and new focus, so I think it'd be a good time where we all get together and sit down and meet and see if we can work through this and have an understanding of how we're going to move forward. Does that sound like a good solution? Yeah, I wonder if they could discuss maybe um, hiring a collection agency that would maybe take a portion of tickets that aren't getting paid. That's possible. Yep. But I, I do I do think that's a good idea that that the the director and with uh, Brian and um, myself, we meet because if we're we're we're, ha we're expected to put together cases that they can prosecute, our people are going to need to understand exactly what elements of that investigation are critical uh, for a prosecution. So um, we need to get with them to find out what that is. Okay, we'll make that happen. Uh, for the ordinance revision, though, what I have to do right now is I need to. Um, close this meeting right now. We're going to open this up to a public meeting and we're going to hear, uh, we're going to offer, first of all, I'd like to offer up anybody in the audience that is for this revision of, of the ordinance to come forward. Second time, I'm calling for anybody that wants to come and speak in favor of this revision ordinance, ordinance revision. Uh, third and final time, I uh, want to give anybody the opportunity to come up and speak uh, for uh, this ordinance revision. Uh, with that said, uh, now we'll move to, uh, like to open up the floor for anybody to come and speak against this ordinance revision. Going once, uh, again, have anybody come forward to speak in opposition of this uh, ordinance revision, uh, opportunity number two. Third and final time, I'd like to offer anybody in the audience that's willing to come forward to speak against the ordinance for revision, uh, the ordinance revision for the animal shelter. With that, I'll close the public meeting and uh, open up the floor to the commissioners. This is first reading. I'll make a motion to approve on first reading. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the animal shelter ordinance revision on first reading. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Motion carries. This will be second reading will be on our next month's agenda. Uh, now we're going to move to a letter to, to the Service Transportation Board regarding the Great Lakes Basin Railroad. Uh, with that, I'd like to turn that uh, uh, over to Commissioner Blaney to read the letter into our minutes so uh, everybody knows what we're trying to say. Happy to. Um, Dear Service Transportation Board, Porter County Board of Commissioners prepared, adopted, and paid for a professional written submission on the environmental impacts of the proposed Great Lakes Basin Railroad. It has now come to our attention that a toll road was always part of the plan. We find this bait and switch tactic very troubling. 
Hundreds, if not thousands, of Lake Porter and LaPorte residents prepared and attended the environmental impact public meeting. The residents were not given the opportunity to discuss or the opportunity to discuss. Um, we have an extra opportunity to discuss in this <laughs> we need to take out. Um, or the opportunity to provide feedback on the environmental impacts, a 2,000 foot wide transportation corridor, complete with rail and toll road, would inflict. Also, that says toll road. <laughs> we find this toll road addition to the plan after the public environmental impact meetings were completed dubious at best. The purpose of public meetings is to allow the chance to speak and be heard. The Porter County Board of Commissioners formally requests the environmental impact meetings be held again as to allow public comments on the total planned project. Respectfully submitted, all of us. Any other addition or additional comments or anything else from other board members? I think that the letter hits, hits all the, ma the main points. I mean, they tow road now is part of the uh, their proposal um, they've changed their proposal in my opinion they should start right back at square a it, it changes everything uh, 2,000 foot wide transportation corridors drastically different than a 200 foot wide well, yeah. rail corridor we zero, just, zero on. yeah I think from our perspective we felt as a board uh, that we needed to um, make make this public comment, and that um, you know we followed the process. We've been following the process for the last year uh, when this thing just sort of came out of nowhere, and uh, you know now that they're getting to the point where they're ready to submit their final their final uh, plan, and then they throw the tow road into it. And I know everything that we looked at from the county's perspective with regards to drainage highway infrastructure, everything else, uh, we were not looking at this through the lens of having a 2,000-foot corridor going through there. And so what we're saying is we, we need to have the right to go back and relook at this all over again because they, they, they changed the game on us. Well, it's tr truly, like the letter says, it's, it truly is a bait and switch. They bait us with the railroad, switch it to a tow road. Yep. So, well, I would like to make a motion uh, being, I, I probably shouldn't, huh? Yeah, you can. I can. I'll make the motion to approve the letter. I'll Second. Third. <laughs> yep. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The letter goes out. Um, next on the list is the Memorial Opera House liquor liability policy. I'll turn that over to Scott, and he can let all of you know how we are continually saving the county money. So. Uh, shortly, or a couple months ago, we had to redo the uh, Expo um, liquor liability. Uh, we've got quotes on that that ended up going to uh, Samuelson Insurance Agency um, in Portage. <clears throat> we swing back around now, and the uh, Memorial Opera House also needed theirs to be renewed. Um, we were able to add that to our existing liability po policy at the Expo Center. Uh, the increase would be uh, $250 per year to that premium. The, the overall umbrella premium would remain unchanged. So um, we got some other quotes. Obviously, not everyone else had the opportunity to be able to add it to the existing policy. Uh, the other quotes were uh, $1,000 or more, $1,100. So this is significantly less uh, than I think anyone else could even come close to. So um, I think at this point we were able to do both of those for Expo and Moral Opera House for half of what we did last year. So, yeah. Thanks for running all that down, Scott. Yep. And again, just for clarity purposes, what we did is instead of having two liquor liability policies, we just added the other one as a writer onto the other policy and saved a bunch of money. So those are the kind of things that we're doing up here on the insurance, just trying to um, find dollars under the rug wherever we can and without minimizing the coverage for the for the for the county so um, and the Memorial Opera House should thank Expo for paying for their liquor liability insurance so that's that's a that's yeah. really bad for that. you guys too much <laughs> <that out. laughs> <laughs> thank you Expo. we'll have a cage match out there <laughs> uh, open up the floor the future. Yeah. open up the floor uh, to the commissioners 
for the liquor liability insurance policy? So moved. So we have a motion? Second. And a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Number 10, foundation earning fund. We are going to skip that and we're going to address that at our next meeting. Uh, then we go into clerk. Karen Martin, attorney Ethan Lowe, and election board president David Bings. Uh, please come forward. A legal services agreement with attorney Ethan Lowe of Blasey Tabor Bozick and Hartman, LLC, to provide legal services for 2017 to the Porter County Election Board and voters registration. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Take it away. Um, we're before you today for a renewal of uh, Ethan's uh, legal services agreement for 2017. Uh, there hasn't been any change in the dollar amount um, or any of the terms. It's the same agreement we've carried forward for the last uh, probably, probably eight years, I would say. It's been that long. I don't think there's been any change or reflection. So. Any questions from the board? Motion to approve. We have a motion and a second to approve uh, Ethan Lowe's, uh, attorney Ethan Lowe's uh, contract for the election board president, for the election board and voters registration. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank, Thank you, you, Ethan. Thank you, Thank you, David. Thank you. Uh, next, health department, Keith Letta, director Nancy Mathena, <laughs> office manager and attorney Dave Hollenbeck. Uh, an ordinance revising the Porter County Board of Health fee structure. This again is first reading. Good morning. Good morning. First of all, I think Scott and I should lobby for a lawyer appreciation week. <laughs> good luck. Good luck with that. <laughs> that. That's going to take some real negotiation. Yeah. Like a politician appreciation. <laughs> yeah, that's never happened. You can see those Hallmark cards. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, on a more serious note, um, we are here today because of our ongoing effort at the Health Department and the Board of Health to try to correlate uh, the fees that we charge for services against the cost of providing those services. This is an effort to free up as much money as possible uh, from the general fund and from the health fund uh, to do other things. Uh, so we monitor this probably with not as much regularity as we, we should or could. But we're here today regarding a proposed modification that has been unanimously recommended by the Board of Health for your consideration that would raise the uh, birth certificate fee, the death certificate fee, the paternity affidavit fee, and the affidavit of amendment fee uh, to more closely uh, show what the costs of providing those services are. Even with the increase, we are still toward the bottom half of the pack by comparative count counties in terms of what they charge. Uh, the birth certificate would go from six to eight dollars. Um, the death certificate would go from nine to ten dollars. The paternity affidavit from twenty-five to thirty dollars and the affidavit of amendment from $25 to $30 as, as well. Uh, we did study this and looked at our costs. The birth and death certificate fees for us have not raised in over 10 years. The, birth, the death certificate fee did go up $2 in 2013, but that was because the legislature in their wisdom uh, told all counties we had to collect $2 to go into the coroner education fund. Uh, so and we did not see any of that revenue in 2013. So we're here asking uh, the commissioner's consideration for what we believe to be rather modest increases in the fees we charge so that they can more directly reflect the cost of providing those services. And Nancy, who is in charge of this part of our department, is here to answer any questions. And, of course, Keith and Martin behind me is the chairman of the Board of Health. I only have my question is where where does where do these fees go? Do they go into a fund, David? I'm sure they do. Yeah. Right? The health department, pursuant to law, has a freestanding fund. These fees go into that fund to help. In fact, when we do the annual budget, your auditor then estimates this would go into miscellaneous revenue, and then that reduces what the tax rate has to be in order to fund the health department. But these are dedicated fees that go into the health fund. It's not part of the general fund. And do we have a balance on what that fund is? 
um, the auditor can probably provide us with that figure. Yeah. If I could get on the system, I could. That's okay. We can. This is first reading, so we can follow up on that okay. at a later time. I okay. didn't mean to push you on the spot, it's, um, Mickey. It's, um, their, their fund is doing well. I mean, they're not running in the negative. And then what is what usually do you spend out of that department that comes out of that fund? That funds 100% of the health department costs for so the county. So it's self-funded. Yes. Gotcha. It has a, its own tax rate to the extent the tax rate's needed after these miscellaneous okay. revenues are. Okay. And we're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars that we're able to save the county through keeping fees correlated to costs. Okay. Did, did you say that uh, depending on, on the, the to total amount collected in, in fees such as this throughout the course of the year, um, that that has the ability to lower the uh, the tax. Uh, right, Jim. What happens is we turn in a budget to you every year. That budget is fully funded out of the health fund. We don't get any other money whatsoever. That health fund revenue consists of two things: our collection of fees and the tax rate. The more fees we collect, the lower the tax rate is going to be to fund that budget. And again. This goes back, some of us have been around for long, this goes all the way back to the Bethlehem Steel bankruptcy when we, it became perfectly clear to the county that we needed to do a better job of correlating the cost of our services to what we charge people um, for that service. And what we're here to tell you today is that for eight bucks on a birth certificate and $10 on a death certificate, that pays the county for the cost of providing both of those things. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. Um, uh, we have a motion and a second uh, on this uh, ordinance. Uh, with that, though, I will pause. Uh, uh, I will pause the uh, the meeting, and I would like to move out of the board of commissioners meeting. Now, open it into a public meeting. Again, we will go through. This is first reading. Uh, and so what we will do here is we will offer uh, anybody in the audience that wishes to come forward to speak in favor of this ordinance first time, please do so. We now have the second opportunity to come forward and speak on behalf in favor of this ordinance. Third and final time, anybody wishing to come forward and speak in favor of this ordinance? We will now move to anybody wishing to speak in opposition of this ordinance, please come forward. Second call, anybody wishing to come forward to speak in opposition of this ordinance? Third and final time, anybody wishing to come forward to speak in opposition of this ordinance revising the Porter County Board of Health fee structure? With that, we will close public hearing. We have a motion and a second on the floor. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. We'll Thank be you. back at the June 13 meeting for second reading. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Nancy, you stay right there. <laughs> I just saw that. <laughs> uh, go ahead, Nancy. You can. Uh, you have the floor. Sure. And the seat. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Um, Letty Zapita and I are here today on behalf of the Porter County Health Department to ask for your approval and support to run a collection drive to benefit the Porter County Animal Shelter. Um, we would like to run a collection drive to parallel with the opening of the new shelter um, during the, the time frame of June 1st through June 14th. Um, in doing this, we would like to distribute some collection bins and flyers and so forth throughout some of the county buildings and hopefully run a successful collection for them. Okay. We've also prepared some flyers upon your approval today that we'd like to hand out. May I approach the bench? Sure. Thank you. Thanks. We have a lot of fun things well, planned nice. to try to get as many employees and the public Thanks. involved as possible. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank you both for for doing this. Thank you. So, thank you. You're welcome. Has Tony seen this? This is all. Awesome. No, she knows it. Yeah, <laughs> and we, will, we will definitely get her in, uh, in on that. 
Okay. I'd like to open up the floor for any. Yeah. Um, I'm just glad to know I'm not the only one feeding my dog peanut butter. <laughs> oh. <laughs> they love it. I really appreciate you doing this. My only thing would be to check with Tony and make sure she needs all the things you're asking. Sure. For. Absolutely. I originally sent her a flyer. I, I spoke to Tony a while back. We communicated via phone and also email. Okay. So I sent her a preliminary form, but this, of course, is a lot nicer and prettier than what I sent her. So, um, and, and it and, is very nice. Yes, yeah, it is. <laughs> a lot of good info. Yeah. Have you given any thought of how, how often you're going to be emptying these? They could be emptied every day. Well, our plan is to try to get someone um, who we can work with in each one of the county buildings who can kind of let us know where we're at um, as far as the items that are collected, and then we health department representatives will go and collect that stuff and and keep it all together. Yeah, if you if you could if you could collect that every day to make sure you're not left there overnight, sure. that'd be helpful. Absolutely. That's right. Uh, we need a motion to we approve. We need the floor is open. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second uh, to request to hold a collection drive to benefit the Porter County Animal Shelter on behalf of the health department. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you again. Thank you very much. Yep. Have a great day. IT, Don Wellson. Mr. IT, come forward. We've been meeting with you a lot lately. <laughs> Yeah, he's yeah. excited about that too. Uh, I asked Scott to step up here because he's gonna. In case he had any questions on his um, copy machine that we want to purchase. Okay. So, um, we talked a couple weeks ago about the storage issue that I had at the courthouse, and I'd just like to read this brief explanation of what happened. On 5.40 a.m. on April 27th, our VM storage unit had a failure bringing down the virtual devices and servers for all users at the courthouse. This is the same storage unit we talked about in March that needed to be replaced this year. Fortunately, we were able to bring the storage unit back online and had all users and servers up by 9.30. Um, we're looking at probably $30,000 to replace this. Um, I do have 124,000 left in CCD, but I just wanted to make sure that the um, commissioners were aware of what that balance was. This is the money that uh, has to last us till the end of the year. So, um, <laughs> just as a side note, that the majority of our equipment that we have in place now is anywhere from three to seven years old, and a, a lot of it does need to be replaced. Um, so we're looking at other things when Can come. You tell me the balance? Uh, 124. 124. And Don, you're also, based on our meeting, you're also putting together a, a plan for what it would cost us to buy ourselves out of this. Correct. Right. Yeah, we're, we're putting a plan together, and it's yep. going to be reflected in my 2018 Team budget. budget. Right. So we're we're trying to set the table for next year already, and we're working towards that. So um, thank you. Um, the next thing on the list was the uh, copy machine for the Memorial Opera House. This ain't a real big one. Is it? It's larger than what we have, but not huge. <laughs> um, we have about a $26,000 printing budget that we use every year for playbills, season brochures, all that. We're outsourcing a lot of these things to print houses. The issue is, is it costs about $1.08 per playbill to print. And we're throwing away or recycling a lot of them at the end of the show runs. And when you add that up over the course of five performances, five main stage shows per year, it's a lot of money that we're throwing away. Um, you so, don't order fewer because the, price goes because the price goes up. So you have to order in bulk in order to get a price break. Um, and with mailing out and all that sort of thing, we're, we're seeing a lot of wasted dollars. So in order to help with some of that, I think that if we can move these things in-house, we will probably see a lot less waste in the future. Right now we're operating at a probably 10 to 15 percent wasted money. I'd like to get that down to like zero, but you know, uh, a lot, lot less if we move in-house. And how old is the copy you got there now? I believe it's five or six years old. It oh, got there just before I did. End of useful life. 
I, I think it's at the end of useful life for the Opera House. Um, we have Adams Remco out there quite a bit doing repairs, and I think there's some frustration because we're trying to get the printer to do things that it's not made to do, oh. posters and large mailings and things like that. So, Our plan is to uh, move that to the IT department since we don't have a copy machine in our department. Oh, okay. And we, don't, we probably won't use it hardly at all, so hopefully it'll last a couple of years. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Motion to approve. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Yep, thank, thank you, Scott. Uh, SB Services. Yeah, you know, um, Scott McClure contacted me um, about this, and I called the people down there, and I supplied you with all the information that they want to do. We converted to uh, voice over IP in 2009. I think a couple of years prior to that, the county had done this before with some other company. But uh, what they do, they look at all our internet, our telephone bills, and see if uh, we're getting gouged anywhere in the federal taxes or any type like that. Uh, there's no fee up front. Um, the only fee that they'll charge is whatever they can save us, they, they um, are going to get like 50% of that. So it's, it's no cost. So it's it's probably a pretty good deal. I don't know what goes on at the sheriff's department. Yeah. I know that most of my stuff is free. I don't pay any long distance. I do have a couple of fax machines that are still um, analog, which I do pay for. But yep. uh, it's probably a good deal since it's not a, it's not going to cost the county anything. Well, I think from the standpoint that we've never really done that type of dive on our telecommunications costs and everything in a long time. Uh, it's an evolving industry, it's an evolving area, and I think it's a good time for us to see where we're at, see if we can uh, have some cost savings. I know uh, in the hotel business that I'm in, uh, telecommunications over the last eight years has taken a dramatic turn, and I know we've used these type of consultants in our company because the, the landscape is changing daily on this type of stuff, and we, you know, they'll be looking at lines, line costs, um, a lot of different things. So I, I think it's a good audit for us to do right now to see where we need to be. Um, so We've I, been per pretty successful in those audits that we've taken on, like the waste services. And we've, we've, we've discovered we, we're, saving, we're now saving money. Right. So, so any questions, Laura? No. Nope. All right. SB Services Agreement. I'll open up the floor. Second. We have a motion and a second for the SB Services Agreement. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. And then your last one. Uh, my last thing, uh, I just want to make the commissioners uh, aware that I'm going to be on the June agenda for the county council uh, asking for a uh, additional. Well, I'd like to just read this so to make it part of the record. In June of 2014, every department was asked by the council to cut their 2015 budgets by 10%, or the council will decide on the individual cuts each for each department. Our previous IT director cut uh, $40,000 out of my consulting line, line item. This line item has been used for a variety of things, from troubleshooting issues that were either have been unable to be solved by the IT staff or out of the realm of expertise to running data cables. Normally, I would have bought retainer hours for this consulting money because I would get a cheaper rate than if I just paid as I needed them. Not only are we responsible for the telephones, but we are also responsible for the telephone paging system, voicemail, auto attendance, and Jabber, which is our messaging system. We also use this line item for security changes on our routers, firewalls, web filter, and email filter. In 2016, we installed voice over IP system at the Sheriff's Department. This added another 150 telephones and a four-station switchboard that the county IT is responsible for. In addition to telephone systems, we use consulting line item for any Microsoft issues we are not able to do. As an example, we just completed moving our mail system from Exchange 2007 to Exchange 2016. Last month, the vendor for Quest, which is a software used by the Juvenile Probation Department, requested updates to the IBM iSeries computer so they could upgrade their software. Since I don't have anyone on staff who can do this, I had to outsource this also. As May 1st, 2017, 
I have $3,042.77 left in my consulting line item. I would like to request adding back $20,000 of that $40,000 back to my line item. Any other comments or questions from the commissioners? No, I mean with the with the addition of the, all the all the phones now with the sheriff's department uh, project. I mean, there's no way around this. I motion to approve. I uh, second. Uh, we have a every day about how <laughs> IT is getting ahead all the time. Yeah, we're we're. You know, our IT department in this county has um, deferred a lot of expenses over the years. I think the other thing that I see that I've noticed uh, is just in the last four months, and you, I know you, we've talked about it, um, is uh, a lot of the, the malware issues, uh, a lot of the security, cyber security issues. Uh, governments are now being targeted. Um, we obviously do not have people uh, in this building that are cybersecurity experts. So from that perspective, we have to go through our consultant line item again. And I just feel that this is something that uh, I think we're going to be dealing with more and more in the future because it looks like it's not letting up. Uh, and I think since we're responsible for maintaining and keeping all that data safe, um, we need to be proactive rather than reactive. So. Um, with that, um, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. I would suggest that uh, you uh, start uh, talking and calling and talking to the council members so uh, they're briefed and they understand what we're trying to do here. It's, we're not trying to throw another additional at them that you're, you're at the end of your rope here and it's May. Uh, so um, I just do what you can. If you need any help from us, let us know. Okay. And then the last thing I wanted to bring up, we've got the uh, assessor scheduled to move back to our network um, Memorial Day weekend. Oh. So hopefully all that will go fine and uh, they'll be back on board with us again. So looking forward to it. Good deal. Thank, you. Thank you. Good job on that, Don. Thank you. Facilities, Matt Steckley, come forward. Quote for new lawnmower, which can also be used for snow removal. <clears throat> Good morning. So this is, we went out and got three quotes for a new mower, which will add a total of three mowers to our fleet. We have a third grounds guy from a restructure earlier last year. So the need is there and we've taken grounds and snow in house and this is kind of the last piece of the puzzle to mm -hmm. help us get there. Um, Dunlin Schools uses this, Valpo uses this equipment and we've had conversations with them. We've gotten reviews, feedback, pros, cons, and it's a, it's a good investment on a piece of equipment that's going to last a long time and help us out. Matt, my only question, you got three quotes. They're obviously all got to be talking about the same thing because they're so tight. Um, just my only concern was is that some of these are a little bit more, have a little bit more detail than the other, but you've verified that, like, for the three quotes, only, one, three only, one. only on one I see weight brackets and suitcase weights and the that back vendor, That dealer happened to go further in what it comes with. The others just left that out. It's all right, but but you're you're three all right. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. Right. It was the same scope to all three of them. That's why I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, Are those, these all three local vendors? Yes, and Riggs is actually the one that was the lowest we're asking to award to. It's Riggs, Don Bales, and HFS Tractor Sales and Service. Riggs is the lowest? Correct. Motion to approve Riggs. Second. We have a motion and a second to improve a uh, new lawnmower, which can also be used for snow removal in the winter. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. And then just a quick update as we speak now, the Master Gardeners Club, Commissioner Biggs, I know you got involved with this. They're actually over there now. Um, I met with them. We've had several meetings. Um, the layout, they designed the two boxes in front of the courthouse. 90% um, of what's going in those boxes is perennials, a little bit of annuals that we'll take care of, but we're going to have years of, of really, it was a nice layout, it was a nice design. They did a fantastic job. A lot of them are retired and, and older and they're just a bunch of green thumbs. So I met with their team, my team's over there assisting. I did offer and inform them the county would 
buy them lunch today. They're all over there working all day. So somehow I did say we can probably do lunch for them. But just wanted to say that uh, publicly, what a really give thanks to them. And I know you helped get that started. And it's excellent. It's really going to look good. Cool. cool. Yep. Thank okay. you, Matt. I think lunch is all right, Matt. Thank you. If not, I'll pick it up. Well, yeah. Good luck. I have to check with me. <laughs> Vicky will walk you through that. Yeah, 74, yeah. That 74 step process. I'm, I'm just going to yeah. get my money out just yeah, in case. Yeah. 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 Let me know. Let me know. Yeah. Send me the bill yeah. if I bought yeah. lunch. Yeah. We'll start a collection now. We can't do that. No, we can't. <laughs> but let me know, Matt. I'm mm -hmm. chipping in. <laughs> I'll chip in. Again. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll tell you right now, chip in. Yeah, I think <laughs> so. I'll just have to give it. We've been down this road. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Vicki, uh, the auditor, Vicki Urbank, is going to give us an update on the Lao system. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning. Um, this is the update I have been eagerly um, awaiting to give you. As you remember, last late last summer you approved a contract for us to move to a new payroll financial system. We uh, had our initial data pull, our initial data conversion uh, late last fall, and in the last few months we have been deep in data conversion and pouring over various uh, fund numbers and payroll data and all sorts of um, data that we need to make sure that we have a smooth transition. Finally, we think that the STARS have aligned our initial testing and our parallel payroll has um, been completed successfully. And so we are going through another training this week. And if all works well with what we call our final data pool, which is scheduled for next week, we are um, on schedule, hopefully, to run our next payroll after the May 30th payroll, the June 12th pay date, entirely on the new system. So we will be converting over to Lao within the next few weeks. We've already used Lao uh, Financial for the beginning of the year <coughs> um, tax reports, but now in terms of using it for fund, payroll, budgeting, we're about ready to proceed. And um, I've been asked about training for departments. We're still working on the training schedule, but we hope to roll this out slowly and systematically with the departments. We're going to begin by giving them their new department numbers and their new fund numbers. It's going to be a dramatic change over what we've been dealing with. Um, then we're going to show them how to enter uh, claims, and I've already shown a few people how to do that process. Then we're going to move into the payroll, and then we're going to move into the budgeting process. So we will have, hopefully, the new system up and running for the upcoming budget hearings. And that brings me to the next issue uh, that is really, I feel, sort of your baby, and that's the time and attendance system. As you remember last year when we moved towards the new payroll financial system, you also uh, endorsed the concept of moving to a time and attendance system. And I would like your uh, uh, guidance or direction or your, your commitment for us to proceed with that. Absolutely. We didn't want to do that until we got the infrastructure in place for the payroll system. It wouldn't have worked otherwise. Um, it, would that be an additional cost for that? Yes. And, you know, I think what we probably need to do is have some meetings with you because yes. we're also in the final stages uh, of uh, updating our human resources manual here. Exactly. And if we're going to move to this, this is obviously something that we need to go back to our manual and make sure that it's reflected in there that we have this. So um, I think it comes at a good time, um, at least from an implementation standpoint. Uh, as you know, the dollars are always tough up here. Um, but I think it'd be worth uh, getting together. And maybe uh, when we do get together, you can sort of show us some of these wonderful reports that we're going to be able to look at, too, um, from this new system. So. And whenever you want to see it, we're, we have it uploaded already on the main screen here. Okay. If you want to take a tour of the play data right now. Okay. We're go like I said, we're going to have the final pull next week, and then it all gets converted over early June. Okay. So yeah. whenever you want a demo... We're yeah. ready. Uh, okay. I think we need to uh, we need to continue the dialogue. 
and we need to figure out where this is going to work with our HR manual, and it's a timing thing at that point. So what's the ballpark figure? For time and attendance only? Yep. Okay, the one-time cost is anywhere from 75000 to 90000 It depends on what kind of devices and how many you want. And the committee that we had in place last summer um, looked at some of the devices. Some departments wanted a different type. And it, so it really depends on what type of device yeah. we go with. But that would be a one-time cost of 75000 to up to around 90000 And then the annual maintenance fee, and it was quoted at $36,000 annually. What in the world are they maintaining? It costs thirty six thousand dollars a year on a on a time card. Machine. Welcome to the government. It's the software. It's software. It's the software. It's software. That showers it for me. Well, that's we'll get with you, Vicky. I, I would also uh, make sure that you're as you're talking with council members too that you plant that seed with them because we want to get there together. Okay. Absolutely. From from the cost perspective. Okay. So. Great. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Vicki. Um, is that, now we move into Planning Commission? Yeah. Okay. Uh, before we uh, recess Planning Commission, um, I would like to sort of give a little bit of an update uh, on something that I know the Board of Commissioners and the Council have been working on together. Uh, the Foundation Steering Committee uh, has had an opportunity to meet uh, about a week and a half ago and that would be both members from uh, the council and members from the commissioner's office and also both parties uh, were represented there as well. Um, the meeting was very beneficial and one of the issues discussed was the charitable giving, the charitable giving component of the foundation. The steering committee discussed the creation of a comprehensive process and application for charitable, charitable giving. The committee believes the application and process would be available for the foundation members to review and approve by the first quarter of 2018. So what we're basically saying is, um, many of you have noticed here recently that we have some not-for-profits that are, uh, I guess, very strongly wanting to get in line to get at some of this money. Um, as of right now, um, based on uh, where we're at with the county and where we're at with the financial, uh, just the, the foundation starting off, um, we're just growing. We're just starting this. We're just starting this. So um, I think a lot of people have some of this money spent already. Uh, we're, we're trying to be a little bit more prudent in how we go about this. And so uh, we're starting to meet and putting the processes together for this to happen. But in the same breath, we need to continue to uh, you know, be diligent and, and we need to continue to work through uh, growing this endowment and making it something uh, more uh, for all of us to benefit from in the future. Um, just, just to remind everybody, um, the legislation was passed last year and we started investing the money the end of last year. So uh, we're very early on uh, we're in the infant stages of this endowment and this foundation, so uh, we're, we're going to continue to work with the council members to uh, put a process together that everybody can trust and be thankful for, uh, but in the same breath, we also need to be patient and we need to allow this endowment to continue to grow uh, because as we all know, when you're tied to the stock market, you can have good days and you can have bad days. And what we're doing is we're planning for the bad days because that's what governments do. So, um, well, responsible governments. And, and so that's sort of, uh, I think, and that, that came very clearly from the council as well as the commissioners. Um, but we're just going to have to give this thing a little time to get its feet. And uh, when, it, when the time comes, we'll be ready to uh, talk and, and, and to discuss these things as we go forward. So um, that's about that on that. So uh, any other uh, comments from my fellow board members? That's very well said, Jeff. I think it is, it is extremely premature to do uh, discussing um, who may be getting what and how much. Uh, we are nowhere near um, at, 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 at that place where we, we can make an intelligent uh, decision on that, on those sorts of things. So be patient, like you said. 
Okay, with that, we will recess. Uh, no, we don't recess. We just go right into it. Uh, we're going into our plan commission meeting now. Uh, we have one item on that agenda. And uh, go ahead, Bob Thompson, take the floor. This is Resolution 17 0 3 of the Porter County Planning Commission. Petitioner is requesting a zoning map amendment from I 2 General Industry District to RR Rural Residential District. This was heard at the Planning Commission at their April 26th meeting, and a public hearing was held, and they forwarded it to the Board of Commissioners with a favorable recommendation. What was, uh, was that a unanimous vote, Bob, or was it? Yes, it was. Anything, Commissioner Blaney, you'd like to add? or Because I know you sit on that board. No, it was unanimous. Okay. Uh, this, I mean, just real briefly, it's, a, it's an odd area. At, at some point, this was right. zoned I-2, probably back when we originally did zoning. It was going to be by a railroad spur that either is not there or never went in. Right. It's by the Canadian National Airport, or Canadian National Railroad, and also by the airport. So it was looked upon as being industrial there. They're ambitious. And all the surrounding property has developed into right. rural residential. residential. Right. That's why we have somebody coming in, coming in, wanting the down zone from I2 okay. to RR. Right. Okay. And what is the, the purpose of uh, the rezoning? So they can build a house. So they can build a house. They cannot yeah. build a home in I-2 zoning district. It has to be one of the residential districts. Well, you ought to be able to build your house when you want to. I agree, but not in the I-2 zoning area. So. Motion to approve. We have, we have a public hearing. Public hearing. <laughs> yeah. Wait, what? You have to hold a public hearing. Oh, we do. Yeah. Well, yeah. I thought we just did, Bob. It's first reading right there. All right, we're going to recess. Uh, we're going to move out of the commissioner's meeting, and we're going to uh, now open up to a public hearing. Um, we're going to give uh, anybody in the audience that wishes to speak in favor of this rezoning, uh, please come forward, state your name, and the reason for uh, the rezoning. Come on forward, sir. I'm... Terry Eastend. I am an attorney and trustee on behalf of the property owner uh, who couldn't be here today, Mr. Bassos. And um, this has been an extremely difficult situation for Mr. Bassos in that he bought this property, 17.860 acres, with representation that it was agriculture, and it is for tax purposes, taxes agricultural land went to apply for a building permit and found, of course, that it was zoned I-2 and he couldn't get a building permit no. uh, without rezoning the property. So we filed a petition for rezoning and the planning commission was good enough to recommend it uh, on to you. Uh, the property owner has been delayed in his building process. I see this as first reading. Is there a possibility that we can get to a second and third reading? You only need, we two, need two, right? two. We need two. two. Okay. Can we? Nope. No. Can't wave it. No. Not on the rezone. Okay. Um, but uh, I think it makes good sense. It kind of was the wake up call, if you will, for people in the neighborhood, in that we had some folks come in and say, well, gee, how are you going to be building a subdivision or whatever? And they explained, no, it's just the one residence on 17 acres. And um, those folks got educated uh, by Scott and, and members of the Planning Commission that, in fact, uh, this I-2 zoning could be a problem in the future for the, those folks who are north of this property. And so I think you're going to be seeing some other petitions to come in for our, our zoning to fill in the gap, if you will, and eliminate some of the uh, potential for I-2 development between the residential uses that are are there. Mm -hmm. So we would hope that you would consider it favorably. Thank you. I'd like to make the second call for anybody wishing to come forward and speak in behalf of this rezoning. Third and final time, anybody wishing to speak in favor of this rezoning ordinance. 
We will now open up the floor for first call for anybody to come up and speak against this rezoning ordinance. Second time, anybody wishing to come forward to speak against this ordinance? Third and final time, anybody wishing to come forward to speak against this rezoning ordinance? <coughs> With that, I'll close the public meeting. We'll now op entertain uh, the floor to the Board of Commissioners. I believe there's a motion on the floor, Mr. President. Oh, there is a motion. There, there was a motion to approve. Uh, yep. All right. Oh, my bad. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries first reading. Uh, second reading will be at our June 13th commissioners meeting. Thank you. Next on the agenda is the Valparaiso Elks, George Primich, Flag Day Chairman. I don't think George is here. Uh, I will read that out. Uh, a request to use the north side of the courthouse grounds to hold the Valparaiso Elks annual Flag Day event. The event will be held on Wednesday, June 14th. 2017 from 5 o'clock to 7.30. The Elks will bring their own sound system and chairs. So, uh, motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor to signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, with that, I believe that ends our agenda for the day. Um, and this board stands in recess. Thank you.